Roses are red, violets are blue, and boy do I have a spotlight for you. Happy Valentine's Day everyone, Sobroni of Gene Day Reviews here, bringing you a servant spotlight for the only girl that you'll be spending money on this Valentine's Day, Karen. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers that utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to give Karen your chocolate, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now, on to Karen's stats. Karen has a max HP of 13,837 and a max attack of 11,351, which becomes 12,486 due to her ruler class modifier. Karen has the second lowest HP stat among SSR rulers, but she does have the second highest attack to offset it. Compared to the general 5 star pool though, Karen's attack and HP are only about average, if not slightly below. When it comes to hit counts, Karen has 4 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 3 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. Her NP gain isn't too great due to that low NP gain rate, but she does have very strong star generating from all of her hit counts. Despite average stats across the board, Karen is more offensively oriented than most rulers, while still maintaining a good all-rounder stat spread. Taking a look at her skills, Karen's first skill is Holy Shroud of St. Valentine, rank A. This skill grants her 3 hits of invincibility, lasting for 3 turns. It also grants the party 1 hit of invincibility for 3 turns, and increases their NP gain rate for 3 turns between 10 and 20%, depending on level. This skill will also grant Karen a special buff, which absorbs 10% NP gauge from each ally for herself every turn for 3 turns. Her second skill is Golden Arrow, rank A. This skill grants Karen a 1 turn taunt and charges her NP gauge between 20 and 30%. It also reduces the enemy's NP gauge by 1 and reduces their attack and defense for 3 turns between 10 and 20%, all of those effects depending on level. And finally, her last skill is Mana Burst Love, rank A. This skill increases her Quick Card, Arts Card, and Buster Card effectiveness for 3 turns between 10 and 20%, and it charges her own NP gauge between 10 and 20%, all depending on level. It also reduces the enemy's NP gauge by 1. Moving on to her passives, Karen has item construction rank A, which increases her debuff success rate by 10%, independent action rank A, which increases her crit damage by 10%, masochistic spiritualist disposition rank EX, which reduces her debuff resistance by 20%, but gives her a 20% buff to her attack whenever she is affected with a debuff. Goddess's Essence Rank B, which increases her damage by 225 and her debuff resistance by 22.5%. And finally, Iron Willed Faith Rank A, which grants her immunity to charm and terror debuffs and increases her own buster card resistance by 10%. As for her deck and Noble Phantasm, Karen has a quick arts deck with quick quick arts arts buster and a quick noble. Phantasm. Karen's Noble Phantasm is the greatest hits calling a gate. It's an AoE quick attack that deals damage to all enemies with an attack modifier between 600 and 1000% depending on level. It also reduces the quick card resistance of all enemies by 20% for 3 turns, inflicts buff block on them one time, and increases her own NP damage for one turn between 10 and 30% depending on overcharge. And this Noble Phantasm can be upgraded through an interlude which will increase the damage modifier to between 800 and 12 1200% depending on level, and it will also grant the additional effect of dealing 150% bonus damage against chaotic aligned enemies. Rulers are typically very easy to level due to the lack of ascension mats required, and Karen is no exception. For level ascension, she's just going to need monuments and pieces for each class, which can be obtained from the daily training quests. For skill leveling, Karen will need blue, red, and yellow gems for each class, as well as 12 arrowheads and 15 rainbow yarns per skill. Arrowheads are best farmed at the God Sky Boulder Ruins in Lost Belt 4 with a 46% drop rate, and Rainbow Yarn has a 45% drop rate at the Gojo Bridge in Heian Kyo. Finally, the real best priest makes her appearance in FGO. It's hard to believe that it took this long to get a fan favorite like Karen into the game, but given how amazing she looks and how much effort went into her animations, I'd say it was worth the wait. But looks aren't the only amazing thing about Karen, she's also packing a sweet set of stats. Because despite a slightly below average HP stat, as a ruler, her innate damage reduction against nearly every enemy in the game more than makes up for it, and she manages to still be very tanky. On top of that, she has strong offensive stats for a ruler and excellent star generation. But where Karen really shines is her unique passives. 
specifically Iron Willed Faith and Masochistic Spiritualist. She gets a free charm immunity and buster resistance, which can really come in handy for some boss fights, but more importantly, Karen also receives a free personal charisma buff whenever she has a debuff. And yes, that does mean any debuff, including debuffs from craft essences like Black Grail and passive debuffs from allies like Avengers who lower the entire party's debuff resist rate. So in effect, this passive is just a 20% attack up on Karen if you build her correctly. And on that note, let's talk about her kit. To make up for her innately low NP gain rate, Karen's skill set is packed to the brim with NP batteries. Most notably her last skill, Mana Burst Love, which is a 20% buff to all card types for 3 turns, an NP drain, and a 20% NP charge. This is probably Karen's most important skill for both damage and farming, because it provides her with a decent buff to all of her damage, especially when combined with her passive attack buff, and it gives her a nice 20% battery for NP looping. Draining NP charge from an enemy is also an incredibly handy piece of utility to have for any type of challenge quest, and it isn't even her only NP drain. Karen has another drain on her second skill, Golden Arrow. This skill taunts all enemies for a turn, reduces their attack and defense, is an AoE drain, and it further charges Karen's NP gauge by another 30%. Combined with her mana burst, this gives Karen a full 50% NP battery, which is the gold standard for effective farming. Furthermore, the AoE attack and defense debuffs are very strong for both stall teams and for supporting a DPS. The AoE drain is just icing on the cake, since it effectively allows Karen to delay an enemy noble phantasm by two full turns. The taunt would also be another great piece of utility too, if it weren't tied to the NP drain. Because the skill drains NP charge and the taunt only lasts for one turn, it effectively means that it can never be used by Karen to tank an enemy NP, which sucks because she's absolutely built to tank. And finally, Karen has Holy Shroud of St. Valentine. Not only does this skill provide her with an invincible protection from arrows effect, it also grants the party invincibility for one hit and increases their NP gain by 20%, which makes it a straight up stronger version of David's Harp of Healing and an incredibly powerful piece of defensive utility for protecting the party from any AoE NPs. Holy Shroud also has the additional effect of draining 10% NP charge from each ally every turn for 3 turns and feeding it to Karen. And this is invaluable for farming, it essentially gives Karen a free 20% charge at the end of every turn as long as her allies have at least 30% starting NP charge. This enables her to loop consistently in all kinds of team comps and even while using CEs like Black Grail. All of Karen's skills are ridiculously strong, but level Mana Burst first since that's her go-to skill for both DPS and farming, followed by Golden Arrow for more charge, and then Holy Shroud last since the scaling on that one doesn't really matter. For her pen skills, just pick up Mana Loading to help with farming. Karen's Noble Phantasm is an AoE quick attack that reduces enemy quick resistance by 20%, inflicts buff block, and increases her NP damage. After her interlude, it also gains the additional effect of dealing 150% bonus damage against chaotic enemies. There are quite a lot of chaotic aligned enemies, so this is by no means a small buff. In fact, after her interlude, Karen's NP becomes by far the strongest among all AoE rulers, and one of the strongest AoE NPs in the game, period. Unfortunately, that NP interlude is still about a year away for us NA players. Still though, Karen is able to work extremely well as a farmer and quick looper in Scotty teams, even before her buff. Her 50% NP battery combined with the NP drain on her first skill makes her one of the most consistent Scotty loopers around, and she can even make use of Black Grail to farm on some nodes. Which is great because as I mentioned earlier, Black Grail triggers her passive and gives her even more free damage. Karen with a Black Grail can absolutely cleave through waves of enemies and servants alike. How very fitting. But she isn't just a farmer. Karen is also in fact a surprisingly strong tank and semi support for challenge quests. She has a plethora of tools for stalling out enemies and can draw away enemy fire, protect the team and tank hits all while continuously debuffing enemies. This versatility makes Karen sort of the Swiss army knife of rulers. She can do it all, farm, support, stall, and even be a main DPS against chaotic enemies. 
Her ability to play all roles so well can make her invaluable to newer players who may lack more dedicated servants. But Karen isn't without her drawbacks. She does depend heavily on debuffing for her utility, which falls flat against debuff immune enemies. Prior to her NP interlude, her damage is also considerably lacking, which can make her less than reliable for farming and for DPS roles at lower NP levels. And of course, despite being one of the most consistent quick farmers, she can struggle to farm any kind of irregular event nodes that lack the standard 3-3-3 enemy wave format. So the upper tier arts farmers like Spishtar and later on buster farmers like Morgan will still far outperform her in that role. Still though, Karen has so much versatility that she can work effectively in nearly any quick team. She of course works best as a farmer inside of double Scotty teams, but she can also support strong quick DPS servants like Van Gogh and Dante's, or even work as a DPS herself when supported by buffers like Santa Nightingale. Van Gogh and Dante's both benefit a lot from Karen's debuffing and star generating, and both can help Karen out by triggering her masochistic passive, whether that be via curse debuffing or Avenger debuffing. And Nightingale can provide Karen with good damage buffs while also debuffing enemies and helping stall in any challenge quests. Karen's Bond CE is Singing in Spring. It buffs the party's NP generating by 25% while taking damage, and it reduces her defense by 10%. Now this does trigger her passive, but it isn't worth using because the effect is still pretty bad. Instead, use other CEs that can bolster Karen's damage while also debuffing her, like Black Grail or Knight's Pride, or craft essences that grant starting NP charge for farming, like Kaleidoscope and Traces of Christmas. In the future, Rising Mud Rain is also a good CE to consider because it's very similar to Black Grail in that it buffs NP damage by a lot, but it also increases NP overcharge and it deals 500 damage per turn, so it does trigger Karen's passive. So yeah, it's a totally good CE and I'm not just recommending it because it shows off Iris' assets. Moving on, any command code that buffs crit damage, like Heavenly Child of Karama, is also good to slap on Karen so that she can make use of all the crit stars that she generates. Overall, Karen is a heavily versatile servant that can fill many roles very well. She's a premier quick farmer on Scotty teams, her defensive utility makes it easy for her to stall out bosses and support the team in challenging content, and post interlude she has one of the hardest hitting AoE attacks in the game, which makes her excellent as both a DPS and a farmer. On the downside, she does suffer from damage issues before that interlude, she is a bit over reliant on debuffs for her utility, and as a quick servant she can't compete with top tier arts and buster loopers when it comes to farming. So Karen gets a B plus from me at release, which I'll bump up to an A minus once she gets her NP interlude. Even at release, she's still a valuable Swiss army knife of a servant who can fill nearly any role competently, and she makes for an excellent carry for new players to build around. But she really takes off as a top tier quick servant once she gets that power spike to her NP. And she can be exceptionally strong for even veteran players who plan on making use of Summer Scotty once she releases. Just keep in mind that her limitations can make it harder for her to excel in those annoying 90 plus nodes. And those are my thoughts on Karen. On top of being a strong servant gameplay wise, she also has some of the flashiest attack animations and sprite work out there, which makes her incredibly fun to use and build around. It's great to see a fan favorite character live up to expectations, at least in my opinion. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So we're running out. Later.